Hi, this is Eric White. This is the continuation of this two-part series on an overview of the open packaging conventions. If you haven't watched the previous screencast, I suggest that you watch it before watching this screencast. You can find that screencast here. Let's return to this properties window in Visual Studio. Another important characteristic of a relationship is a relationship can be internal or external. An internal relationship is from one part to another part. An external relationship points to something outside of the document. So, for instance, if I come back over here and open test.docx and I insert a picture, I'll insert the office logo.png and down here I'll insert it as a link to a file. I can see the image is now inserted. I'll save it and close it. Now I'll come back over to Visual Studio and Visual Studio will of course tell me that test.docx has changed outside the editor. Do I wish to reload it? And yes I do. And now if I go look at the relationships from document.xml, I can see that there is this new type of link. It's a link with a small globe on it. And if I click on that link, I can see that this relationship is an external relationship. And I can see that the target of this relationship is a file with a specific location. I'm sure you are familiar with the various characteristics of internal and external relationships from your use of Office documents. So for instance, if you move a document from your computer to another computer that doesn't have that file in that specific location, then of course the image won't display properly. Now let's talk about this relationship ID a bit more. This relationship ID is a means by which markup in a particular part can refer to a particular relationship. This relationship ID as generated by Word is something like RID8 or RID3 or RID7. It doesn't really matter what this string is other than there are a couple of limitations like it must start with a character and not a digit. Key point is that these relationship IDs need to be unique only for a particular from part in the relationship. So in other words, here we can find a part with relationship of RID1. And if I come over here to header1.xml and look at the relationship from header1.xml to the image part, it also has a relationship of RID1. It doesn't matter because these relationship IDs need to be unique only in the context of a particular source part. Every relationship also has a relationship type. Relationship types are defined in the same way that namespaces are defined for XML namespaces. By using types that are patterned after the internet domain namespace, non-coordinating parties can safely create non-conflicting relationship types. This relationship type is important because if you are a consumer of an OpenXML document and you want to find all of the external relationships to images, you would iterate through all of the relationships looking for relationships that have a target mode of external and a relationship with this specific type. When examining these relationships from one part to another part, Internal relationships that are from one specific part to another specific part have this target, and this target can be either relative or absolute. In this particular case, the target is to settings.xml, and that means it's relative, that this relationship is referring to a settings.xml that is in the same directory as document.xml. Alternatively, this target could start with a slash, in which case it would be an absolute relationship. With regards to the markup in an OpenXML document, in other words, the XML that is inside of this document.xml part, 
there are two kinds of relationships. There are explicit relationships and implicit relationships. I'll open test.docx and I'm going to insert a comment. Save it, close it, return to Visual Studio and reload it. As an example, the relationship from the main document part to the comments.xml part is an implicit relationship. If we look at the relationship, we can see it has a relationship ID of RID8. But if we were to look at the markup inside of document.xml, we would never see a reference to a relationship ID of RID8. Instead, a consumer will iterate through all the relationships from document.xml to other parts looking for a relationship of a specific relationship type. In contrast, if we look at the relationship to the image one, we can see this relationship ID of RID7. And if I open document.xml, format the XML, and look for RID7, we can see the markup for that particular image. And we can see that that markup refers to the relationship via its relationship ID. So to reiterate, there are implicit relationships where the RID doesn't matter except that it needs to be unique within this set of relationships from that source part. And there are explicit relationships where the relationship ID is referred to in the markup of the source part. This only makes sense. There is only one comments part. A consumer of OpenXML doesn't need to distinguish which comments part to open, but a particular source part may have multiple relationships to images, and the markup needs to distinguish which image it's referring to. You can see the difference between implicit and explicit relationships in the OpenXML SDK. I'll create a new OpenXML SDK project. Add my reference to document format, also to Windows base. I get the main document part. I can get the comments part directly from the main document part just by dotting into the word processing comments part property. But if I want to get an image part, I would have to get the part by ID. If you recall, the ID of the image part was RID7. And because get part by ID returns just an OpenXML part, an image part is derived from OpenXML part, I have to cast the return value of get part by ID to image part and then assign it to an image part. These two lines of code show the difference in how the OpenXML SDK deals with implicit relationships, which is that you can just get the part by dotting into a property and explicit relationships where you have to get a part by an ID. Finally, let's talk a bit more about parts. Let's look at the properties for a part. I'll click on document.xml. I'll press F4 to bring up the properties window. And we can see that every part has something called a content type. This is similar to the relationship type in that it's a long string that uniquely identifies the type of a part. So to reiterate, there are effectively two varieties of these long strings that identify types of things in an OPC package. The first variety is relationship types, which we can see for each relationship in an OpenXML package. And the second variety are content types, 
which we can see by looking at the properties for each of the parts in an OpenXML package. You will see that every one of these parts has a path to it, the full path of it. This is the URI of the part. You should never rely on the specific URI of a particular part. For instance, here, you can see that the URI for the main document part is slash word slash document dot XML. And you will experience that Word never places this main document part anywhere else. But there is nothing to prevent another producer of OpenXML from putting this part in any other location. So long as the location of this part is correctly identified by the relationship from the main document package to that particular part or from a part to another part, it doesn't matter what the URI is. You can use this URI in processing the parts within a particular application. So for instance, in an application, you might make a list of the parts that you're interested in, and you might identify those parts by its URI within that application. But you shouldn't save that URI and expect that that part is going to remain in that same location. Instead, you always find parts via relationships. Some time ago, I wrote an article on MSDN entitled Essentials of the Open Packaging Conventions. You can find that article at this link. In the article, you can find this diagram. This diagram illustrates relationship types, relationship IDs, content types, and how they all work together to form a package. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new OpenXML content that we're producing. Follow me on Twitter at EricWhiteDev. Follow OpenXML on Twitter at OpenXMLDev. And you can find my personal blog at EricWhite.com. Thanks for watching.